hi everyone this is sumit k so in this video what i'm going to do i have discovered this mcp server from google cloud mcp so this is the repository that you can use it uh, for your google cloud services so if you look at this repository this is a, a kind of a pre-built uh, mcp servers by google cloud so here you can read that uh, uh, a model context protocol server that connects to Google Cloud service to provide context and tools for interacting with your Google Cloud resource. So basically this MCP servers uh, will connect you or connect your MCP client to the Google Cloud services, right? And it will allow you to interact with the Google Cloud resource. Now, what are the services that this MCP server supports? So today we'll see that in demo. So these are the services like uh, Google Cloud Logging, Google Cloud Monitoring, Google Cloud Spanner, and then um, uh, it has you know, Trace, IAM Compute, Google Cloud Run, and all those things, right? So uh, Google Cloud Logging, it also supports. You can query the logs with a custom filter. Um, you can search the logs with a specific time range. And may, or maybe you can format and display the logs, uh, which uh, will display as, as a human readable format. And uh, you can also um, yeah, interact with the Google Cloud Spanner database. You can execute SQL queries against Spanner database. Uh, you can list the available database and tables. You can explore the database and schema. So you can get some list, right? But you can't create some things, right? So these are the tools um, that are in built part of this mcp servers uh, we also have a google cloud monitoring which retrieve and analyze your metrics from the google cloud monitoring uh, google cloud it also supports google cloud trace so these are some of the functionality that this mcp server supports and you don't need to do anything you just need to use that in your local system if you want to test it uh, if you have a um, cloudy uh, desktop in your on your machine then you can use that to connect to your MCP servers. So the recommended thing, the server support two methods of authentication with Google Cloud, the service account key file or the environmental variable. So to interact with your um, Google Cloud console or services, you need to um, use Google uh, application credential uh, in the environmental variable. I'll show you in a minute or alternatively, you can um, pass the environment, uh, environmental variables and Google private keys and client email. Right, so this server will use your Google Cloud project as an environment variable, and then you will should be able to uh, interact with the um, with your Google Cloud service. Right, the first thing that you need to do, you have to clone this repository and then change the directory, and then you need to install the dependencies, it's pnpm install, and then you need to build it. Right, and then uh, you need to authenticate to the Google. Uh, cloud which will basically uh, store uh, the credential under the config directory which is a hidden directory and in your user profile the first thing that you need to do is basically um, uh, you know copy this particular configuration so i have already run this um, steps already in my terminal uh, you, should, you can just follow the same here and this part um, MCP server client, what you need to do, um, you go to your MCP client, cloudy, check for settings, check for settings here and developer and this is my um, Google Cloud MCP server, I'll show you here what exactly it's inside it. So what you need to do, you just copy paste this entire content and put it here. I'll show you just a second. Let me just zoom in. So here you just need to replace your um, home directory, basically the the uh, the entire the full path of your uh, index file, and then um, the environmental uh, this Google application credential. Right, you just need to replace your this part. Right. Now, if I show you my terminal here. I have already cloned this directory Google Cloud. Let me just zoom in. So you see that here I have this environment directory where I have set the 
and this key uh, this key dot json is nothing it's my service account keys basically right and in the json format so we need to download it and put it here i uh, and under environment variable uh, you just need to set the path of these keys and you also make sure that you put your google cloud project id right rest of the things we will discuss later after this video uh, but let's just focus how we how we're going to use this mcp server very easily and interact with your um, google cloud services right so what i'm going to do i'm just opening my terminal here the first thing that you need to do you need to uh, build the server it's already running i guess in my or uh, let me let me just put it that way I'll, I'll, let me just stop this one i'm going to build it again and then start the servers you can see that uh, it is starting your cloud mcp servers it's creating the mcp server instance and then initializing the google cloud authentication in lazy loading mode which is uh, true and then it's registering all the google cloud logging services and all those things and then finally for, uh, finally you can see that uh, if the server started successfully and are ready to handle the request so now what you need to do you just need to restart it first you quit this and then restart it now if you see in my google cloud service i already have an instance um, running the spanner database is running here let me show you here this is my uh, spanner database so i'm going to um, prompt a query um, or, or sending a prompt uh, to um, get some uh, details about this uh, spanner database so let me show you this test spanner database right now i have one database and uh, just one database and under that we have one table okay so let's go back here and i want to please i want to send a prompt please list me the spanner instance and its database let's let's see how this mcp server responds so you see that uh, the cloudy mcp client would like to use an external integration which is oh sorry one second i'll, I'll let me show you first let me just cancel it first <coughs> the first thing i wanted to show you here this if you uh, open this cloudy desktop the first thing that you need to check out is basically this these many tools so this mcp server has all these capabilities the list the spanner instance list spanner database um uh, spanner query count this is something natural language spanner okay query matrix to get trace set the project id get the so all these capabilities this mcp server holds and it provide you uh, to use these tools against your against the services that it supports now i'm going now i would like to run this okay so the first thing here i i am asking list the spanner instance and its database so it has this tool for listing the spanner instance right as you as you have just seen in the um, mcp servers capabilities so it's calling these tools right so let me allow this again it's asking for permissions it has find the spanner instance now it listing the spanner database first first it 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 called uh, the list spanner instance and then list spanner database so you can see that this is my project id this is my standard instance state is ready uh, this is the reason uh, database and state is ready so same here you can see that uh, my instance id and this is my this is the reason and this database now if you want to ask another question give me the table information of my database 
So now um, the, this MCP client, the MCP server is, is uh, picking this uh, particular tool, list spanner tables, right? So for every query, right, that uh, MCP server understand that uh, where we, which tool, um, which tool to use depending on the user's query or the or the user's prompt right now we send that now uh, it has it is going to execute some spanner query so these queries so remember that these queries are not inbuilt um, within the MCP server. So these queries are coming from the generative AI, right? Whatever, so or, or behind the scene, we have a cloudy AI, API keys. So these queries are coming from coming from the LLM, right? And then these query will be inserted into that tool and this tool will execute this query. Let me allow And here you can see that it's executing the spanner query. Okay, it's, now it has some more query. Let me just log once. See the query name, the database ID. Log once. So see, you can see that now finally it is responding. It's a bit slow, but I'm getting the response. And this is the user tables, right? I have a user table and the user's ID, name, email, database uh, created, right? All those informations are here. So if you see here, I have, if we go to my database, this is the user's table, right? And now I want to see um, show me the details of user table um, what's inside inside in this table what data we have Now let me allow this. So see, executing the query. Log once. So you can see that current records are two, right? We have user ID, we have name, and then email, and these are the schemas, right? Total record, we have two unique name, and all those information, right? If you see here in the users table, you'll see that I have two users over there. Right. If you query that, you will find that. Right. And there are many more things you can see here. Uh, let me just check one more thing. Uh, let's see uh, what is my project ID. So now it will uh, uh, the LLM will un will un will understand which tool to call. So it's so it's calling now, this time it's calling get project ID. Okay, so it give me the current uh, project ID and right now I am almost out of usage uh, the, because uh, um, Cloudy, uh, the LLM has some limit. So I have um, used those limit for today. So yeah. So these are the capabilities that you can use in your natural language and the MCP server will perform those perform on your natural language query and uh, and get the result uh, on your cloudy desktop. So yeah, but you can you can go, go ahead and uh, use all those capabilities like if you want to query any metrics, uh, maybe you want to get some trace, you want to set the project ID as well, it will set the project ID. So so many things are there, right? So yeah, uh, that's that's it for today. Uh, I will come up with uh, another MCP tools, um, which basically 
um, which basically interact with your Cloud SQL and uh, it will not just get the response, but it'll also create a, a database or maybe a complex query. And uh, basically with your natural language, you can, you can create as many databases, as many tables. So you don't need to, you know, learn this uh, complex query, you know, uh, in executing in the, in the Cloud SQL.